I apologize for nerding out there, specifically to my wife as I came out, but the great thing about that song, other than its beat, is that it's about cars. And I kind of indiscriminately love everything about cars. I always have. I like looking at them. I like driving them. I like designing them. I like buying them. I like selling them. I like washing them. And I even like the way that cars smell. But my favorite thing to do with cars is driving them. And as a car enthusiast these days, that's kind of a weird place to be. Because whenever you see the future of cars, we're not even seeing cars with steering wheels sometimes. Because the future of transportation and cars in particular is really tied up around the word autonomous these days. The definition of an autonomous car is a car that uses artificial intelligence, it uses GPS, and it uses sensors to drive without any human interaction. And if you listen to the auto manufacturers, the municipalities, and also especially the media, Autonomous cars are going to save us from all of the problems that cars call. They're going to save us from vehicular deaths on the roadways. They're going to save us from the damage we're doing to the environment. They're going to save us from the core inefficiencies of the cars that we have. Y'all, that sounds great. Let's do it. Let's do it tomorrow. Well, unfortunately, we got some issues with that, with tomorrow, okay? And the issue with tomorrow is that there are more cars on the road in America than there are people. There are 300 million cars and trucks on the road right now. And based upon how many cars got bought last year, it would take 12 years to replace all of those antique non-autonomous cars with autonomous cars. But that's not the way we buy cars. We don't just give one up to get another one. And as a result, our cars end up being, on average, 11 and a half years old. What are we taking away from this right now, right? So we're all having an 11 and a half year old car that's not autonomous. So who is gonna have all these autonomous cars? And I hate to tell you, but in the short run, autonomous cars are gonna be for pretty wealthy folks because we tend to release the most technological advanced things at the higher end, and then it goes down to the low end. So if we accept that each car being autonomous isn't realistic, what is autonomy really saving us from? What's the question that we're asking about autonomous cars? The question is, how are we going to save those 40,000 lives that were lost on U.S. roadways last year? With a single autonomous car? Probably not. So what question are we asking? And questions are really funny things. A friend of mine, um, Albert Einstein, once said, if he had 55 minutes to solve a problem, if he had one hour to solve a problem, he'd spend 55 minutes thinking of the problem and just five minutes thinking of the solution. So making a good question is what gives you a good answer. People often ask me the question, what's your favorite car? I have no idea. That question's too big for me. I got favorite concept cars and race cars. I got lots of favorites. But I can't just give you the answer to my favorite car. Now, if you said, what's your favorite car that you're going to buy next? Well, that's a pretty easy answer. It's whatever my wife likes. That's what we're gonna <laughs> So let's talk about one more question that's very interesting. If you came to me and you said, Ben, I want you to design something, I'm an industrial designer, to protect a man's legs from the elements, I would say, okay, and I'd probably start buying a pair, I'd start designing a pair of pants because that's my, where I'm coming from. I see people in pants. But if I was going to be honest about this and start thinking about what would really anatomically work best for me to protect myself, I'd probably come up with the idea of the malert. <laughs> In that, the male skirt. Because that's asking a different core question. Um, so let's talk about what core question do our cars answer now. Why do we spend $50,000 on a car? Is it because they're safer? Mm, not necessarily. Is it because they're more efficient? Nope. In fact, more expensive cars tend to be more powerful, heavier, luxurious. One of the main reasons we buy a car and spend $50,000 on a car is because what it says about us. Not you though, right? Nobody in the audience. You guys don't do that. You're buying it purely for, uh, just for transportation, right? It's fine. Okay. Let's play a little game then. Let's all pretend we're going to our 20 year reunion in high school. Right? And you pull up with pride <laughs> in that. 
So the same way that, that I'm going to start wearing my Malert as soon as I get off stage, I think that starting to really look at different transportation uh, opportunities is going to require us asking some different questions. So two of the main questions around autonomous cars are scope and scale. Okay? Scope is how autonomous is the car. And I would say that autonomous cars are kind of here now. The, the Tesla Model S is able to back out of your garage and pick you up at your front door in order to get you at your meeting based upon weather and traffic. It's pretty close, right? I mean, that's, that is a car driving without human interaction. But that one car is still a car and it has all the baggage around cars, and it does really cool things, and it's very interesting, but it's not a system. A system like a smartphone's a system. So let's imagine if you're on a desert island, right? You've got your smartphone, and there's no cell tower on that desert island. You know, once you get to the last level of Candy Crush, you'd use your smartphone to crack open clams and, and, and be a flashlight, right? Because it doesn't have a system built around it. And without a system, your cell phone just takes selfies that you can't share. And, and, and what fun is that? So I think the autonomous car is a step beyond where we are. But I think where it's eventually leading us is to an autonomous mobility system. An autonomous mobility system may be something that you don't own. Um, maybe it would be where you would no longer be driving in your six-passenger SUV by yourself looking for a parking space. I've seen a couple of you, I think, doing that lately. Um, so I think what this system may be is you may, you may be a part of a subscription service, and if you need a one-passenger vehicle, that's what picks you up. That vehicle may bond into a host vehicle with other vehicles to take you to a place and then redistribute you or distribute goods at the end. This system is something that we probably can't visualize right now. We don't know what it's going to be. But this system requires for every component in that system to operate together. So imagine if we deployed this as just one New York City cab. And that New York City cab had to follow the rules of the road without any, uh, you know, if it, it, it didn't do anything aggressively, right? It followed the rules, it was courteous. That cab would never leave the side, <laughs> right? I mean, have you guys been in a New York City cab? It's like a video game, but you only have one life, you know? I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> so I really think that this system is going to require a couple of things. One of those is it's going to require that we eliminate non-autonomous vehicles in that area at one time. So it's going to be a different system. It's going to force us to ask some different questions. Um, when we're really going to get interested and when the questions are going to start getting really interesting is the day that somebody dies in an autonomous car. And that's going to happen. It has to happen, right? So we're going to lose somebody in an autonomous car and everybody's going to jump on that. And so that's going to be the day that we're going to have to decide what our tolerance is for this new technology. That's going to be the day that we're going to have to decide that we're willing to trade our current ability for complete freedom and mobility for a different tomorrow. And I hope we get there. I really do. So as I wrap this up here, um, I want to make a deal with you guys. I've been talking for the last 10 minutes or so about autonomous cars. And the deal I'll make with you is I really want you guys to consider what downtown Greenville would look like if there were no non-autonomous cars. I really want you to consider what your life would be like if you weren't paying $750 a month for something that carried six people that you drove by yourself. And I really start to think about how autonomy can relate to our mobility future beyond you having a car that is autonomous, but instead autonomy becomes a component of a system that we can use to start addressing that 40,000 people that die on the road every year. You know, I think I'll always have a car that I can drive. I think there'll always be a place, maybe outside of city centers, where I can always drive my car. But I think in city centers, I'll choose to participate in that mobility system that we've kind of discussed right now. 
I hope that you choose to, to, to participate in it too. And when you look over, if you want to know if it's me or not, the way you'll be able to tell is because I'll be the guy wearing the Muller. Thank you.